Last year, Miami and Cincinnati tangled in the highest scoring shootout ever between these two schools. Redskin quarterback Terry Morris threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. But that couldn't outdo the Bearcat tandem of quarterback Dan McCoy and tailback Reggie Taylor. The Bearcat backs amassed almost 650 yards in Cincinnati's 45-38 win. This year has been a different story for both offenses. Miami has failed to find the end zone with quarterback troubles and key injuries. Miami's offense has sputtered while head coach Tim Rose tries to pull the right strings. In Cincinnati, Heisman hopeful Dan McCoyne is off to a rocky start. The all-time Bearcat passer hasn't been able to get the UC offense firing on all cylinders. So it's a critical game for both teams as they try to get on track in the 92nd meeting between the Miami Redskins and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. It's the 92nd meeting between the UC Bearcats and the Miami University Redskins. This is Bob Long along with Chris, uh, Greg Christopher. There are some big question marks on offense for both of these two teams in this old rivalry. For the Miami Redskins, Greg, one of the first questions is the health of quarterback Mike Bates. That's right. Mike suffered a separated shoulder in the Eastern Michigan game. Now, while he played in the Syracuse game, and he's going to play tonight, he's going to be wearing a harness on his left shoulder for the rest of this season. Now, it's not going to affect his throwing any, but it will affect his mobility somewhat. One constant, though, for the Redskins is the play of wide receiver Andy Schillinger. Schillinger had 12 touchdown receptions to go along with his 46 total receptions last year. But by no means is Schiller a game breaker. He's not, he doesn't have great speed, but he is a great possession receiver. There are some and we are live at Nippert Stadium again as we get ready for the ball game as the Miami Redskins will be kicking off to start this ball game, the 92nd meeting in 99 years. Next year will mark the 100th anniversary of the beginning of this series, and there'll be a big celebration for that. But not much to celebrate for these two teams so far this season, Greg Christopher. The Redskins enter one and two. The UC Bearcats also at one and two. Gary Gusman has the ball teed up here on the Nippert Stadium artificial surface as the Redskins deploy to kick off to Ed Johnson and also Dwayne Hunter for UC. And this 90-second game between these two schools is underway. That's Hunter back at the five-yard line. Got a good lane to the outside and brings it up six to the 24-yard line. A return of about 19 yards to start the ball game. And now we'll see Danny McCoy, the troubled quarterback of the Bearcats. It's going to be interesting to see how McCoy gets off. He's had uh, slow starts against Rutgers and Penn State in the first and the third season, first and third games of the season. So it's going to be critical for him to get off to a good start tonight. He's had about 380 yards passing in three games, well below his average of last year. We'll be talking more about that as we go into tonight's ball game. Leonard Cry and Alan McKinney are the two uh, backs in the eye as we have the first play from the line of scrimmage at the UC 24. And it's McKinney. Good speed for the running back. He busts that one up to the 31 before Rod Korn comes up to make the stop. It'll be second down and about three as he got seven on that first carry. He's running over the right side of that line, which is a huge offensive line. It outweighs the Miami defensive line by 20 pounds. Actually going to give him eight yards as he got up to the 32-yard line. So it is second and two. The wide receiver, the man to watch, Roosevelt Mukes. He's got 10 receptions to lead the Bearcats. He is their speed burner. It's the pitch out to McKinney. Not much room that time. He is thrown down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about a yard that time. 
Looked like uh, Andrew Marlette came up there to help make the stop. So it's going to be third and long. Pete Mather was also in there to help break up that play. Here's the defensive line for Miami. Chris King is a sophomore, but he actually has four years of eligibility left. The linebacking crew, Pete Mather is in there starting right now. He's replacing uh, Matt Kahn in the inside. And the defensive secondary is very experienced for the Redskins. And it's third and three. Possible passing situation here for McCoy. He's looking deep down the middle, got a man open, and it's caught by Sanders out at the 47-yard line. Rod Korn again on the stop, but McCoy has his first completion of the night. That's what Danny McCoy does best. He gets a good drop back, and he looks for his receiver. Sanders is replacing Joe Heiss, who was last year's leading receiver for UC, and he's an excellent receiver going across the middle. Once again, UC doesn't have a big game receiver. They don't have anybody who's really fast, but Sanders and Heiss are great possession receivers like Schillinger. First and 10, the first first down of this ball game, and it's up to the UC 48-yard line. A 17-yard reception by Sanders. A coin faking, rolling, got the screen set up to Leonard Cry. He doesn't catch too many passes, but he gets rumbling down to about the Miami 45-yard line. Tom Fisher, Jerry Pochko came up there on the stop, but another good first down gain, and that, of course, is always important for any offensive team to pick up seven or eight yards and set up that second uh, down situation. There you can see McCoy faking and then turning around. He's got the screen beautifully set up, and it picks up a good gain of about six or seven yards. A really nice one-handed catch by Cry. He made, he went he and McKinney were practicing those catches even before the game. Little one-handed passes back and forth from each other. We'll give it a gain of six for Cry. It's second down and four at the Miami 46-yard line. We're in the first two and a half minutes of this ball game. Big pull for McKinney down to the 36. Great blocking up front. Again, Rod Korn had to come up out of the secondary, but not before McKinney got another first down to the 35, a gain of nine more yards. Al McKinney is, has been living in the shadow of Reggie Taylor for the past two years. He was an Ohio high school offensive back of the year. He put up some great numbers in high school his senior year. He rushed for 2,398 yards, and get this, Bob, 49 touchdowns in one year. Not something you do usually in college, but uh, <laughs> possible in the high school ranks. First and 10 at the Miami 35, a good drive so far. Cry has stood up there in the middle, bounces off several people, but he's swarmed under. Fisher was in there on the initial hit, along with a host of other Redskins. Jeff Anderson on the bottom of the pack, also Andrew Marlatt. So Cry didn't get much that time. He went sideways quite a ways there. Cry again is the starting fullback. He's had over 100 yards and been averaging about six yards per crack so far this season. He finished last spring as the number one fullback, taking the place of Robert Williams, who started last season but suffered a broken leg in the Virginia Tech game, the first game of the season. So Cry and Tackett have taken over, and they've done a fantastic job. It's second down now, and some movement in the line, but they get it off. There's a pass incomplete. Looked like somebody jumped, but I guess not. It'll be third down and nine. That's the first incompletion for McCoy. Corn on the coverage back there. Passes out to Bill Davis, who's also one of the top receivers on this team, along with Roosevelt Mukes. Davis had his best game ever last year from McCoy. And McCoy, as you can see there, holds the Bearcat record for career passing yards. And tonight, sometime, if he gets 149 yards, he's going to break the all-time total yardage record for a Miami player, or for a Cincinnati player, excuse me. That's for both rushing and passing. So it's third down and nine now for McCoy. He's, he's driven his team down to the Miami 34. And he's straight back to pass. Got great protection all day, but he overshoots his man, Mukes, out in the flat, and he overshot him by a mile. He had all day back there. He could have gone back there, set up, taken his time. Mukes was doing the right thing. He was well covered, and he was coming back to the quarterback like they teach a good receiver to do. So it is going to be fourth down, and right now Gary Overgaw is in there. One of two place kickers, Phil Insolaco's the other, but this one is going to be a try of about 40, or uh, 40, 151 yards with it, the uh, 10 yards of the end zone. He's going to punt it instead. He faked the place kick, booms it toward the corner. He might make it. It goes out of bounds, caught by a UC cheerleader, I think, down there. Let's see where they mark the ball. At about the six-yard line, so a little trickery there. Overgaw is the starting punter, and he fooled Miami on that play. It did look like he might try the 51-yard field goal attempt. A little variation of the quick kick. You might see every once in a while where the quarterback takes it. 
interesting setup. Keeps the Miami people from having anyone back to uh, to uh, to get the ball out. So Overgaard does the job, and he puts Miami in a hole. Ball back at the uh, six. So Miami is in the hole early on. Mike Bates to bring his team up, and we'll see if tonight Miami can get its running game untracked. Right at the middle, John Gist, big hole. Look at him go. Out to the 19, he stumbled and fell, or he might have gone about another five or 10 yards. Mike Kelly got him, but a good opening play for the Miami offense. Gist getting a first down. That's a good omen for the Miami offense. If Gist can get the running game going along with the right side of the line, Schmidt and Gephardt there, they open some huge holes and Gist gets out and he's on his own. You can see, uh, I think he goes down on his own. He does. He does not really get touched. He just fell on his own after a pickup of 12 yards. So a first down for John Gist and the Miami Redskins. Again, it's Gist and some more good yardage. He gets about six more. Art Sheffield made the stop, but Gist running very hard, gets the ball out to the 24, and it'll be second down and four. A nice little draw play there. One thing, here we can see the Miami lineups. Bates is taking over for Terry Morris last year. Gist is a transplanted defensive back. Schillinger, as we said earlier, led the nation in touchdowns last year for receptions. Bill Johnwitz, by the way, alternates quite a bit with John Stofa at one of the wide receivers. They bring in a lot of the plays from Coach Tim Rose. So it's second down and four as Gist got six. And Bates with his first pass, zips it to Schillinger. Out to the 40, he's going to break the tackle and go a long way. Finally out of bounds at about the 40-yard line of UC, and a flag is thrown over on the sidelines, and he is knocked down to the track. They had a late hit, and Schillinger's down, I think. He went down, he got onto the cement there, and he's hurt. John Lewis was the one that uh, pushed him out, but the flag was thrown down at the 33. Schillinger broke a tackle. He should have been stopped right after about a gain of 16 yards, but instead, it's a huge gainer. Let's watch it again. Bates, good pass. And there, Schillinger breaks the tackle. He's going to go down the sideline, and we'll see if we can catch this late hit coming up here. They pushed him after he's already he's already out of bounds. There's 18, giving him a shove over there. And he falls on to the track, and that's going to take the ball even further down into UC territory. He was pushed out at about the 40, and the 15-yard step-off takes it all the way to the UC 25. It looks like he's OK. I'm sure he'll be back in a game that's as critical as this for the Redskins. That was a gain of 36 yards on the pass play. Tack on 15 more, so you have a net gain of 51 yards on that play. And with 10 minutes left in the first period, Miami driving in this scoreless duel. Giston Thomas in the backfield, and this is Thomas, and he will go absolutely nowhere. Chris Asbeck was in there. It's going to be second down and still about nine yards to go. The first carry of the night for Chris Thomas. We should mention that up front uh, line again of Miami's does a good job of blocking. Matt Kemper, John Schaefer, Sean Riley, Tom Schmidt, and Randy Gebhardt. So Bates facing second down, and we'll call it about eight yards to go from the UC 23. He's got Schillinger and Stofa flank this time, and he's looking Stofa's direction. Got him in the corner, caught. At about the five yard line, John Lewis again was over there. But Bates is threading the needle. That was a great pass by Bates. He, watch this. It's like a frozen rope on a line to Otto Stolpa. There we'll see Stolpa. He gets right inside Rhodes. Nice catch down at the five. They're going to spot it actually at the six-yard line. So a gain there of 17 yards. And the Redskins are threatening to do what they did last year against UC, and that's take an early lead. Bates down over center, ball at about the six yard line this time. This is Gist, got some room down to about the three or four. Stewart in there on the stop that time. So it'll be second and goal. Gist, as we said, has had a mediocre season to start off with 28 rushes for 78 yards coming into this game. An average of less than three yards per game, but uh, he's done very well so far tonight. He's already picked up 20 yards and three tries. So Miami fa facing second and goal. They've got the ends in tight now. Let's see what Bates elects to do here if they go wide with the ball. It is Thomas trying to sweep. He's got the corner turned and he's going to go in. So the Miami, but we do have a flag. We have a flag down in the middle of the field. Hold everything. Let's see who this one goes against. 
The officials are conferring down there on the field, and we'll see what it is. I don't think it's going to be good news for Miami. They are walking back, and they are no longer celebrating. It is a holding call, what we feared it might be for the Redskins, and that nullifies Chris Thomas's touchdown run. That would have been his first TD carry of the season, but it all goes for naught. Rose uh, cannot be too happy with that play. I think we're going to see the left side of the line for Miami collapse here, and you're going to see people trying to hold their people back. It looks like the tight end Steve Fumi was trying to hold his man back there and got caught for holding. That moves the ball back, and the Redskins will have it now at about the 10-yard line with second down and goal. 8.49 to go, first period of play. No score between these arch rivals. Schillinger will be in there at one wide receiver this time. They also have two tight ends in there. Mike Kuzan and Glenn Huffman, and Schillinger goes in motion to the top of the screen. Gonna pitch it out and go this way with Gist, trying to cut it up inside his blockers. Gets down to about the three yard line and out of bounds there. So it's gonna be third and goal. Walter Johnson helped to push him out of bounds. Booker also over there on the stop. That's a nice job by Gist. He got everything he could out of that. That play was extended all the way to the end of the sideline. Last year, as you can see, Gist was a defensive back. He got quite a bit of playing time in the Cincinnati game. He even had seven tackles. But he shows his quickness there, getting out to the outside, and he did get a couple yards. He did get the ball down to about the two-yard line, so that was a gain of eight, and it's third and goal from the two. The Redskins would like to punch it in for seven here rather than having to settle for a Gary Gusman field goal. We'll see what Bates elects to do on this third and short. They've gone wide every time so far. This time they're going to go the other direction with Thomas. He turns that corner. He should make it. He is in there for the touchdown, and I don't see a flag this time. So Chris Thomas does end up with his first touchdown of the year. That's Thomas's first touchdown, and there he shows his versatility. Thomas is playing fullback, but he's got tailback speed. He's got tailback size even. He gets out to the outside. He can just turn on the Jets and get into the end zone. So that comes with 8.37 left in the first period of play. And Gary Gusman will try to extend his string. Now we'll watch the sweep. It goes the other direction. They've been running to the left side. They come back to the right. And again, Thomas waltzing in. So some great blocking up front. Gusman now trying to extend that point string for extra points in a row. And he uh, nails it. So we have timeout down on the field. Our score, the Miami University Redskins 7, the UC Bearcats 0. The Redskins look like they got their running game going on track, and that's a key tonight because the running game hasn't really done too much so far this year. And the only thing that is really suspect on the Cincinnati defense is probably the front five. They're missing all three linebackers from last season, and their front four on the front there, they play a multiple 40 defense. Those people are somewhat new also. A long march, too, by the Redskins, which is also good news. Any coach uh, loves to see a team march as the Redskins did. They were pinned back, don't forget, all the way at their five-yard line or six-yard line and marched it all the way down the field to put those seven points on the board. So Miami has the early lead here. And we'll see what that does when Danny McCoyne brings his team back out. They ran the ball fairly well in their first series before their drive stalled down at the Miami 35-yard line. Derek Walker, Dwayne Hunter will be back to receive the kick from Gary Gussman, Miami's all-time field goal and extra point leader. Here comes Gussman's boot straight down the field. And again, it'll be Hunter at a five-yard line. That's where he took the last kick. Out to the sideline, not much room, but he's going to reverse his direction. And he'll be tripped up, a nice shoestring tackle, and he's upset with himself. He thought he could break it, but he just couldn't quite beat the Miami defenders back there. If he would have gotten past one there, he might have been able to go quite away. He shows some incredible quickness here, stopping on a dime, turning to his left, and going the other direction. He left a whole bunch of Miami receivers standing right there by themselves. And they were holding some air when they yeah. went to grab for him. So UC starts at its own 21 on its second possession. McCoyne is the quarterback with Cry and McKinney in the backfield. Up the middle, McKinney, huge hole. Breaks it all the way to the 37-yard line. Greg Wersch had to come up to make the stop from the safety spot, but not before McKinney pounded him for 16 more yards, and he's off to a tremendous start. 34 yards on four carries already tonight. 
I'm really impressed with the offensive line for Cincinnati. They've only got two people back. Irwin Owens, the guard, and Jeff Graham is, is also back. So he brought that one out all the way to the 37, first and 10, a 16-yard pickup, and McCoy is back, handing to McKinney again, sweeping the side. Picks up another eight yards before he smashed out at about the 45-yard line. Jeff, Jeff Happ was in on that tackle. Pete Mather was also there. That's what we're talking about, a 94-yard drive in eight plays and helped along by a 15-yard personal foul penalty for shoving Schillinger out of bounds after he was already across the sideline there. So that play got eight yards. It'll be second down and one, and McKinney is running very, very well against the Redskins so far tonight. Under seven and a half minutes to go in the first period. Redskins on top of UC, seven to nothing. Miami jumping, flags down, cry is dumped in the backfield, but we'll have to see if Miami was drawn off or if it's encroachment. Mar Andrew Marlatt was in on the stop. UC players are clapping, so we assume it's going to be marked off against the skins. And that's what it is. Defense jumping across, hey, and that will give a first field. down. Get off the field. On the, on the concrete. That'll take the ball up to about the uh, 49, so it's first and 10 from there for the UC Bearcats. So this drive now picking up two first downs as McCoy and company try to answer that Miami scoring drive. This time we have Steve Sanders and Roosevelt Mukes flanked out. It looks like McCoy wants to throw deep. There's the bomb. He's got Mukes out there. Off his fingertips at the five. Just let him a little bit too much. Once again, McCoy had all the time in the world back there. He, his offensive line was giving him great time, and Mukes had beaten the Miami secondary and was open if the pass had been there. He definitely was out there, and as you say, he has had a lot of time, and so far, though, he's only hit two out of five passes. His receivers have been fairly well covered. That time, Mukes did have the step, but the throw just a little too long. This time, Joe Heiss is in the ball game, along with Bill Davis, as they alternate in two other wide receivers who are also good receivers. Heiss has led the team in receiving the last two years. McCoy straight back again, lots of protection. This time he's got one man harassing him and he's gonna throw the pass to McKinney in the flat. He will go nowhere, a beautiful tackle over there. Jeff Happ was in on the stop. Also Sheldon White came up. So that time they sm smelled out the screenplay and stopped it right at about the line of scrimmage. He got a very short gain, maybe one yard on that one. The Redskin linebackers read that screen pass very well. They held back, they didn't drop back into their routes completely, and they were able to see McKinney get out there in the flat and go out and beat the offensive lineman and make the tackle. This time they'll go with three wide receivers, Bill Davis, Roosevelt Mukes, and Steve Sanders on third and long, about nine from the midfield strike. Low snap, but McCoy picks it up. Under pressure, gets the pass open to Mukes. He's got it for a first down at the Miami 36. Sheldon White got him. And we have an injured Redskin down on that play on that coverage. Looked like one of the linebackers. I think it's I think it's Jerry Prochko. He went down when he hit the turf. His arm, when he went down, he hit the turf, and it collapsed right there. We'll, we'll see be if able can to see it. see it at the end. Yeah, we'll see if we can see it here on the replay. There you can see McCoy stepping up in the pocket. Right there. Oh, I see what happened. He came in underneath. And that's where he got hurt as he made, came in to help Sheldon White on the tackle. I think Sheldon White clipped his right shoulder. Jerry Prosco, the outside linebacker, he's starting along with Tom Fisher on the other side. And as you can see on the replay, it looked like he came in low. White went over top of uh -huh. him along with the receiver, Mukes. We're going to watch. Sheldon White's going to clip Prosco's right shoulder. Right here it comes. You can see him. He got him sort of in the back. Yeah. He is coming off the field under his own power. Appears to be uh, favoring that shoulder a little bit, uh, but at least he's coming off by himself unassisted there. So we'll see how long it takes to get him back in the ballgame. That was a pickup, though, of 14 yards. Coach Tim Rose with a record of 25-22-1 going into tonight's ball game against the UC Bearcats. His team up in front, 7-0. They got off in front of UC last year at Riverfront Stadium, but the UC Bearcats trying to tie it up on this drive. 
they have shown a lot so far on offense, especially running. And here's McKinney with a gaping hole. Breaks it outside down to the 20, the 18, the 16-yard line. Finally run out of bounds there by Greg Wirsch. But he made another gain of about 20 yards. And unofficially, I have McKinney with 63 yards already in six carries. See it here? The line blocks beautifully up the middle. He turns it to the outside. The right tackle, Jeff Graham, number 63, made that play for McKinney, the big senior, 280 pounds. Dave Curry called him the best offensive lineman in spring ball, and he's come out this season. He's done a good job blocking for McKinney and Cry. This drive started back at UC's 21, and it's reached the Miami 16 with first and 10. Here comes McKinney again. The Redskins shut this one down a little better. Pete Mather was over there to mess up that play, and then he got some help. McKinney did not do as well last year, but keep in mind, yeah. there was another guy in the backfield last year by the name of Reggie Taylor, who was one of the greatest backs that uh, that the UC Bearcats ever had. Yardage-wise, he was the best back UC ever had. He was drafted in the 11th round by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but is no longer on their roster. He got about four on that play. It'll be second down and 12. Second down and six, rather, from the 12. Again, Sanders flanked to one side, Davis on the other. Here comes Leonard Cry, the fullback. Breaks one tackle, fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by Jeff Anderson at the 18-yard line. Anderson scrambled out. Mike O'Day made, was in on the stop initially, but Cry fumbled as he got to about the 11, so the Redskins get a big break. That's a big break for the Redskins. Anderson comes up with a fumble there. And that's one thing the Redskins haven't been doing this season. They haven't been taking an advantage of other teams' fumbles. Now let's see whereabouts Cried loses this ball. He's hit right there, breaks that tackle. Rod Korn coming up. Right there, I think it's O'Day who does cause it, and Anderson falls on it. And Miami gets the ball back at the 17-yard line, so the first turnover of the ball game. With five and a half minutes left in the first period, and Miami guarding a 7-0 lead. Bates back to pass on first down this time. The bomb for Stoffel over his head incomplete. Stoffel was wide open down the middle. Terry Noble was back on the coverage, but it was over his head too. So Bates, that was his first incompletion of the night. He had passed for 53 yards in that uh, first drive. Second down at the 17 yard line for the Redskins. We're at halftime at Nippert Stadium on the campus of the University of Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Bearcats holding a 17-10 over lead over the Miami Redskins in this, the 92nd meeting of the two schools. Miami, Miami got off to a very hot start uh, in this game, Greg Christopher, with uh, Chris Thomas scoring a touchdown in the first quarter after a 94-yard touchdown drive. We'll take one more look at that play. Watch Thomas here as he skirts the right side. He had scored a touchdown the previous play, but that was an offside. So that was the end of that. Now we come back as McCoy took his team downfield at the end of the first quarter. A 19-yard scoring pass here to Davis, Bill Davis, right at the goal line. He gets nailed by Sheldon White, but gets in anyway. And then the other touchdown on the ground by Tackett, the backup tailback from four yards out. We also had field goals by Insulaco of UC from 27 yards out and a record-setting 53-yarder by Gary Gusman from Miami to give us that 17 to 10 halftime score. Now, UC, Greg, as we can see, really dominated things yeah. in that first half. The key stat to look at on this screen is at the bottom of the left-hand corner, look how much time Miami had the ball. Look how UC dominated it. They kept the ball for almost nine minutes longer than Miami did. McCoyne, keep in mind, had about 380 yards or something in that nature coming into tonight's ball game. Look at what he's got so far this game. He had 382 coming into tonight's game, 213 already, and he had a tremendous game against uh, the Redskins at uh, Riverfront last year. Before the game, we talked about if the Bearcats were going to do anything this year, Dan McCoy was going to have to get on track, and it certainly looks like he has tonight. He's had a big first half, 15 out of 21 through the air. There was one interception, but that was not off of a pass by McCoy. It was off of one by Bill Davis, the wide receiver, trying a long halfback pass, which was intercepted at the goal line, cutting off a UC scoring drive. The Redskins, on the other half, have not put the ball up in the air as much. One good point, though, for Miami, 66 yards in first half rushing. As we have mentioned time and again, Miami's had a slow start this year with 157 yards total rushing in three ball games, so they're doing much better on the ground tonight. John Gist is leading the way. He's had 10 carries for 53 yards in this first half. 
Mike Bates, the quarterback, was 8 out of 13. Stofa had three catches, and Andy Schillinger had a pair for the Redskins. Tim Rose has got to be reasonably happy with his offensive performance, especially John Gist. Gist has had trouble in the first three games of the season getting acquainted. And now it looks like Gist is finally getting the hang of being a tailback, and he may do things from here on out. You see Band just finishing up its halftime performance, standing on the sideline. As you can see, the Bearcats coming back out onto the field. We saw Miami right there. As they get ready, we're moments away from the kickoff to start this second half of action. But Dan McCoy and the Bearcats have dominated tremendously in the first half. That's going to be a key factor here. My, really, UC has beaten itself more than anything else with an interception by, off that pass by Davis. Also a fumble one time that cut off a drive. So twice they have blown opportunities in Miami territory or this score could be a lot worse than 17 to 10. They've had two or three drives where they've stopped themselves. Otherwise, as you said, this score would have been much higher. And one other drive, too, I can remember where McCoy fumbled the ball on a quarterback sack, and it was a play where, again, uh, they tried from the shotgun and had a bad snap from center. So they really killed off three different drives. The 99-year tradition of this ball game. Here is 1949. <laughs> you see beat Miami in that ball game, Greg. Believe it or not, right here at Nipper Field. And we're going to ring the bell here, which they do traditionally also at the center of the field. This that was back in the days of black and white <laughs> television. This is the victory bell that goes to the winner of right. this game annually between UC and Miami. It used to hang in old Harrison Hall on the Miami campus. And it disappeared for a while, too, rumor has. <laughs> <laughs> the coaches for that 1949 game, interestingly enough, were Sid Gilman for Cincinnati and Woody Hayes for Miami. I think a few people around Ohio might know that name. Very familiar with both gentlemen as coaching greats. Gilman is still active, believe it or not. He just recently signed on as an assistant coach in Pittsburgh. And of course, Woody Hayes, uh, who died earlier this year, was honored at Ohio State's first home game recently also. But he, of course, was a coach at Miami years ago. So the Redskins are back on the field getting ready for the second half kickoff. They trail UC by seven points. We saw those differences in the halftime stats, and if Miami wants to get it back, they've got to cut down the time of possession of UC if they want to win this ball game here in the second half. Again, Miami got off to a good start with that long touchdown march its first time. We saw that happen, though, in the Eastern Michigan game also. They got off to a quick start and then deteriorated from there. It's going to be a key fact whether or not Miami can keep the ball, not only because they need points, but also because if their defense has to stay on the field a whole lot, by the time the fourth quarter comes around, these guys are going to be run down, and UC with McCoy and company are going to be able to put some big points on the board. UC starting to deploy out onto the field. Miami still over on the sidelines as we get ready for the second half kickoff. UC uses several different kickers. They can use either Gary Overgaw, number two, who is going to do the kicking off, or Jeff Jones is a punter. They've both done punting this year. Phil Insolaco does most of the place kicking as far as the extra points and field goals, but Overgaw, as you see him out there warming up his leg for the second half, does the place kicking, or, or rather the kickoff. He has done it each time tonight in the first half, and we'll do it here to start the second half. So Miami will get the ball, and it'll be a key question how they can do on their first drive. If they can match their first drive of the ball game here to start the second half, they'll be right back in this thing. Maurice Nelson trying to get the Miami faithful up on its feet on the far side. He's number 21. He's one of the deep backs along with Chris Thomas. There's Nelson right there. And part of this big crowd at Nippert Stadium. We haven't gotten an official total yet. But as we said, not a, quite a full house. There are a few empty seats. There were 5,000 tickets still left going into game time, but I think they got rid of quite a few of those. I think there's easily over 20,000 here. So Overgaard getting ready to kick it off to Thomas and also Maurice Nelson. From the college, uh, just same as the pros, they kicked the ball off from that 35-yard strike. You see Faithful making lots of noise as Overgaw moves into the ball and drills it down to Nelson at the four. Big wedge up the middle, spins it out to the outside. He's got two men to beat. Overgaw, the punter, or the place kicker, knocks him down at the 35. But a good return there by Nelson, a 31-yarder. 
Nelson and Thomas back there are a double deep threat for the Redskins. Nelson was one of only 11 freshmen to go to the California Bowl with the Redskins last year. Well, watch it here. He starts into the wedge, then sees daylight to the outside, cuts it out right here. He's got a couple of men to deep beat, including Terry Noble, who comes up there along with Overgaw. Noble hits him, and then Overgaw finishes him off. But it's first and 10 at the 35 for Miami. Great field position for our second half of action. Here's the pitch back. Costello. Good gain on first down of four or five yards. Mike Kelly was up there. Stewart also came up. Mike Bates is coming out of the field. Not a bad first half, no interceptions, but he is still looking for his first touchdown passing of the year. He's rushed for one touchdown, but 73 yards in the first half and a completion percentage of better than 60%. Costello got five on that first carry, so it is second down and five. He's in there with Chris Thomas, Costello is, and Bates wants to put it up. He's under pressure, throws it in the flat to Costello. It looked like he one-hopped it, and it was incomplete. So Art Sheffield was over on the coverage. So Bates misfires on the first pass of the second half. Looks like the left side of his offensive line just kind of collapsed there, and the defensive end on the right side of Cincinnati was able to break up Bates' vision, and thus the pass. Coin warming up on the sideline for UC, not yet with his first possession of the first half, but if Miami doesn't get a first down here, he soon will have his first possession. Third and five for the Redskins at their own 40-yard line, just underway in the second half as Bates looks to pass deep down for Schillinger, bobbled the ball, and incomplete. Lewis was over there on the coverage. Sheffield also back there, but the incomplete pass, and Miami will have to kick it away. And once again here, Miami's getting into the same problem they had in the first half. Three plays and a punt. If this keeps up all night, their defense is going to be spending a lot of time out on the field. So Miami will have to punt it away. This time, very little pressure on Art uh, Conrad as he gets the kick down, and I think it hit out of bounds. Not a very good kick that time. It goes out of the 28, so a short kick. Only about 32 yards on that one. And UC will take possession first and 10. So Chuck Conrad has had some good punting going into the night's game, but not a very good kick that time. So far now, he's been averaging almost 45 yards a kick, including a 53-yarder. McCoy with a big, big first half. One TD pass. Gives him three on the season, and he had three TD tosses against Miami a year ago. That's the Danny McCoy of old. Ball at the 28 for UC as they start their first second half possession, and there goes the big man McKinney up the middle. He had 89 yards in the first half of action, and he adds to that total now as he's over 90. Andrew Marlatt and Jeff Happ were in on the stop. He pushed the ball from the 28 out to about the 31. Give him a pick up there. Actually, they spotted it about closer to the 32. It'll be second down and about six. Previous to tonight, Al McKinney had 144 yards against Louisville. That was his best effort. If he keeps this up tonight, he's easily going to break that. Got him now for 92 yards in the ball game. Second and seven. They gave him a gain of three. Right up the middle to Leonard Cry, the fullback. He bruises a couple of defenders and gets a couple. Pete Mather in there. There's a UC fan. He's excited a about the rather game. Rather young fan here for tonight's action. <laughs> Cry only got a couple out of that. Pushed it up to the 33. So it is third down and about five yards to go. Pete Mather has had uh, three tackles on tonight. Been in on three tackles. It's third down now and five yards to go. Coming down to the 13-minute mark of the third quarter with UC leading Miami. 17 to 10. Roosevelt Mukes, one of the wide receivers, flanked out to the near side. And here comes McCoy to pass. Under a little pressure, gets it behind Mukes that time. A bad pass, one of the few that he's thrown tonight. And so McCoy fails on his first effort, as Mike Bates, his counterpart, did. And you see, will have to punt the ball away. Sheldon White, who's the quickest defender in the Miami defensive backfield, had a great coverage on that play. Jeff Jones, the freshman punter, standing at his 20 to get this ball off on fourth and five. Andy Schillinger, the deep back, didn't have much success on his only punt return try of the night. He got sacked at, after no gain on his first try back at about the 15-yard line. That was on two different tries. Try, yeah, really, two different ones. One was called back by a penalty. 
Miami trying to get through to the block it. They don't. Good kick. Schillinger back to about his 22. Looking for room, and he's having trouble. He's giving ground, and he loses about four. He just is having nobody back there. They're trying to go after the kick, leaving him all by himself, and he lost about three yards. Schillinger came up limping on that play, and he's, ooh, he's kneeling down over on the bench there. Not good news for Miami Redskin fans. I don't know if it's just a leg cramp or the knee. We'll see where he's hit. We can pick it up on the replay. He breaks it one way, then tries to reverse field, and there's a defender waiting right there for him, two or three, as a matter of fact. He's horse collared. Can't see what happened exactly, but Miami has the ball in its own 19. Bates wants to pass, swing pass to Gist. Good running room all the way up to the 27-yard line for John Gist. Tom Zabetis made the stop, but a good game for Miami on first down. Bates is 9 of 16 so far tonight. Give him out to about the 27-yard line. That's a pickup of 8 yards, and that was the third catch of the night for John Gist. Coach Rose over there talking with Bill Jowitz, one of his wide receivers, as he alternates him in and out with a lot of the play calls. So it's second down and two after that good gain by Gist on the swing pass, and they're going to pitch it to Gist this time. Spins off one tackle, trying to get up to the first down marker, but I don't think he got there. Art Sheffield made the stop. Also, Richard Rhodes in there. This play is what I'm talking about when I think John Gist is starting to get the feel of being a tailback. Instead of just running, and as soon as he gets hit, going down with it, he's starting to put some moves in, starting to spin as he gets hit. Miami's had a good record in the last couple of decades, but they, it's not been since the late 50s that UC has won two in a row, and that's what they're trying to do out here tonight. 11 and a half minutes left, third quarter, still third and two, as there was no gain on that play. Hits Gist again, and this time he will get a first down, and driven out of bounds over on the far side. Rather make that Chris Thomas on the catch. Kelly and Noble drove him out, but it is good for the first down. Tim Rose looks like he's trying to stay within his game plan. He's not trying to go deep. He's not trying to get the seven points back in a real hurry. He's trying to stay within the game plan, the short passes and the running game, and try to get to the end zone. Thomas only got about four yards, but they only needed two, so it is first and ten. Ball at the 31. Miami's second possession of the second half. Gist and Thomas, the eye backs. Thomas is the down back there in the eye. Here comes Gist. He's got a hole, breaks it outside, 35, 40, 41, close to another first down. He's running very hard tonight. His best game of the season by far. Vaughn Booker has been in a busy man. He's had five stops tonight. But Gist had 78 yards coming into tonight's ball game. Great block right there in the center of the line. Gets some good blocks out in front of him there by Stofa. And got a first down. Picked up about 11 yards on that carry. They're going to measure for the first down here to see if the Redskins got it. See where they spotted close to the 42. That's about where he had to go to get the first down. I think they do. Yeah, he got it. 10 yards will give him. Gist, by the way, now. We mentioned 78 yards coming into tonight in three games. Tonight, 12 carries, 63 yards. Better than a five-yard per carry average. That has to make Coach Rose and his offensive staff happy to see the Redskins finally getting the running game on track because when you can do that, that makes Bates more effective passing-wise, too. They really haven't been alternating the tailbacks either like Rose had planned on doing. So the Redskins with a first and 10. Mark Matthews in motion. He's in there replacing Schillinger, who is not back in after that punt return. Looping pass incomplete intended for Stofa, but well overthrown. So it'll be second down and 10 at the 42-yard line. Vaughn Booker. Here's Schillinger still being attended to in the background on the Miami bench. We certainly hope it's not a serious injury to Andy. At the end of the play where he went down, it kind of looked like he got twisted yeah. as he was tackled. And I wonder if his ankle didn't get twisted and all of that. They're still working him over, so while they do, they have Mark Matthews as his backup into the ball game. Matthews has yet to catch a pass, though, this season. So it's second and ten. 10.51 left in the third quarter. Bates back to pass. Got his man open. Complete out to the midfield stripe and all the way into UC territory. Chris Thomas with a big catch. I don't think he got a first down, but he did make it a big gain as Terry Noble drove him out. See officially where they spotted him out of bounds. It's at about the 47, so he might be close. There you see it. He swings out in the flat. 
beats one defender there, turns it upfield, and Thomas with a nice gain got close to the 47. And they say first down. So he picks up a good gainer there of 10 yards. Bates has now hit on 11 of 19 as he's got the Redskins moving into UC territory. Matthews in motion. Handoff, Gist again. Three or four yards up the middle. Mike Kelly, the inside linebacker, has had a lot of tackles tonight. Six or seven, he's been in a six, I believe, now. That's a trap play that didn't really develop on its own. The lineman pulled to the right, but Gist got the three or four on his own. They there. have given up a lot of rushing yards, the Bearcats have. That's they've... attributed to the front five of the UC Bearcats, and they're inexperienced. Like we said earlier, the three linebackers are all brand new in there. Second and seven, ball at the 44-yard line for the Skins. Bates wants to put it up. Then a screen again to Thomas. He's got blockers in front of him, cuts to the 40, down to the 35, another first down. So they're swinging the ball out to the backs. Booker up on the stop again. And that's good for another 12 yards. Miami's going to take these short passes as long as the Bearcats give them. If they can keep picking up good chunks of yardage in each one, and you can why see not take them? Two of the offensive linemen right out there in front to lead the play. Nice block by Riley. Down to the 35, actually to the 34, making a gain of 13 yards. Thomas now with three catches all in this quarter. Good for 27 yards on this drive. Down to the 950 mark. Miami trying to go in for a tying touchdown. Bates under pressure, gets away from one. He's going to bomb it to his mother or somebody else in the bleachers. He just threw that one out of bounds. <laughs> Stoffel was somewhere in the vicinity. Within 20 yards. Within so. 20 yards. But that one hit the field goal net on the sideline. But you can see he, he's got two different blockers coming, or uh, tacklers coming after him there. Gets away from them both and then just says, the heck with this play, let's go <laughs> back and try it again. So it's second down and 10 yards to go. 9.40 left, 17-10, UC up on top of Miami. Bates looking, got a man, first down. He hits Glenn Huffman, the tight end, his first catch of the night. At about the 22, should be enough for another first down. Miami, John Lewis got him. Miami has three tight ends that they like to use, Fumi, Huffman, and Kuzan. Of the three, Huffman and Fumi are used as pass-catching tight ends, and Kuzan is more the blocking type. He got about 12 on that play, and now Miami's drive has reached the 22-yard line. They started back at around their own 19, so this has been a great drive. It gives the defense a rest. That's true. Mike Carlton, his first carry of the night, gets it down to about the 20-yard line, a pickup of a couple. So Carlton getting a little bit of action, giving some of the other regulars a little bit of a breather. So Carlton gets two. Rob Leshank, uh, Leshnack, rather, comes in to make the stop at the 20, second down and eight. Carlton's from Buffalo Bill territory, Orchard Park, New York. And he only carried the ball three times all of last year. Second down and eight for the Redskins. They are at the UC 20, definitely in Gary Gusman field goal range, but they need a touchdown to tie it up here. Along with the Gusman extra point. Here comes the pitch to Gist. He's got a lot of blockers. 15, 10, 5, goodbye. John Gist, a 20-yard scamper for a touchdown. Down on the field, it looks like Kuzan, the blocker, was hurt uh -huh. the tight end. But uh, he gets up very slowly, but Art Sheffield tried to make the stop. Gist. Boy, he had an escort and a half on that play. <laughs> it looked like he had all 11 Miami people out in front of him. Well, how can you not help but score with something like this coming at the UC defense? A thundering herd thrown at him and all the way in for the score. Sheffield made the dive and tried for the stop too late. If Gusman connects, it's a tie ball game. There it is, it's blocked. Gusman, point string is finally over. It ends right there and at a most inopportune time it had to end sometime and it ends right there for Gary Gusman he had that string since his freshman year Kelly apparently blocked it it was just the front line blocking the collapse and Gusman's streak wasn't just all by himself that's a team effort the whole way and here we'll see how it breaks down well, that leaves Miami still trailing by one point. John Gist with a beautiful 20-yard run, but the extra point was blocked. 
We'll check that streak and see what it ended at. I we'll have to double check the number. But the string is over there. You can see it. It's tipped and it goes up in the air and off to the side and well short. So it's 17 to 16, you see, and there comes Gary Gusman. He's got to be a bit dejected. I know he wanted to leave Miami with a perfect record and uh, keep that streak alive, but it finally comes to an end tonight. Through Miami University's Alumni Association, you can get a copy of this year's highlight tape. Plus, we've got highlight tapes from last year, a limited number available, so call the alumni office if you're interested. 8.33 to go in this third quarter. Miami trailing by a point now, and Gary Gusman will boom it off. Nice kick to the far side of the field. Hunter over there to the nine-yard line. He had a good return last time, going to cut it back. He gets around Corn, gets around another tackler, up to the 20, up to the 25. Boy, he is hard to bring down. He went about 50 yards to get 20. So UC takes the ball back. Dwayne Hunter has been all over the place as a kick returner. Just some sloppy tackling here by the Miami special teams. You can see Hunter, he gets through two or three tacklers there, just arm tacklers, and gets another 15 or 20 yards on his own. Got about a 19-yard return, but he ran from one side of the field <laughs> to the other to do it. So McKinney and Cry in there behind McCoy. His team up by one point. He's going to go down the middle, and he's got a man, his tight end. Huber on the reception from McCoyne. Got that ball all the way out to the 45-yard line. 18 yards, Greg Wersch on the stop, but Huber with his fourth catch of the night. He and Sanders each with four receptions now. McCoyne really looks like he's getting his confidence back. And a Danny McCoyne that's got his confidence is definitely a dangerous quarterback. See if that blocked extra point fires up the UCers. They have first and 10. He wants a bomb here. He's got his man Sanders at the 35. First down. 20 yards on the out pass. And McCoy is heating it up now. He's got Sanders five times tonight for 99 yards. Greg Wirsch on the stop. That drive consumed 81 yards in four minutes. But unfortunately for Miami, the blocked extra point kind of takes the luster off the drive a little bit. Sanders is down. And the only reason Sanders is getting to play so much is because Joe Heiss is banged up himself. So UC receivers aren't that deep to begin with. If Sanders goes down now, McCoy may have to be start going to the running backs a lot more. Sanders has had a big night, five catches for an even 100 yards. He came into the night with seven catches, so he's now up to 12 on the year. First and 10 for the Bearcats, and it hasn't taken them long to get where they are right now. McCoy's completed two passes in a row for big yardage. McKinney tried to cut outside and he fell and went down on his own for about a three yard loss. King was up there to help out just in case, but it was a big loss there. It'll make it second down and about 13 to go. He had the right idea. He had a lot of turf in front of him, but just couldn't keep his feet. Loss of three, second and 13. Seven and a half minutes left third quarter. Miami trails UC 17 to 16. Heiss in at one of the wide receivers, Davis at the other. Backs in the eye behind McCoy, and he wants to put it up again. Got some pressure coming from the outside, gets away from one tackler, still looking. He is bottled up and throws incomplete through it behind McKinney, and he's lucky to get that ball away. Fisher was all over him. Sanders is getting his leg checked there. I saw him hobbling as he came off. Seems to be walking a little better now. McCoy, by the way, is 17 for 25 in tonight's ballgame. That's nearly 70% of his passes. The but UC that... offensive line is really giving away passing attempts. If you watch them as they get up there, they are almost leaning completely back on just their hind two feet on any passing attempt. You can see right here, it's obvious, though, that it's a shotgun situation, though. He's got three wide receivers in there. Heiss, Davis, Mukes. Low snap. They've had trouble with the snaps to him. He gets some good outside pressure. Steps up. Round two man. Hit. Still getting loose. He's going to run the ball, but he's caught down at about the 34. So the Miami defense that time does a good job. And they flushed him out and made him run. Fisher was up there to help stop him. McCoy gets about three yards, but it's going to be a fourth and about ten. So he got back to the starting line of scrimmage where, he, where the series began. There you see him stepping around from Marlatt. 
McCoy's not Cap mobile got, anyway. Yeah. He's got an injured knee, and he once again, he's no Fran Tarkin. He's about as mobile as Brian <laughs> McClure was a few years ago. Well, it's going to be fourth down, and now we'll see if they do actually go for the field goal here from 52 yards. Last time, Gary Overgoff faked it from this formation. This time, he's going to try it. It's got the distance. No. He missed it. So, a break for the Redskins. They'll get the ball back as they hold UC. So he missed about a 53-yarder. That was about the distance where Gusman put the ball up. Actually, about uh, 51 yards that time on the miss by Overgaw. So we have timeout on the field, 624. There's McCoy talking to the folks upstairs. Wish we could tap in on that conversation. <laughs> trying to figure out what the problem is, trying to get the ball into the end zone. Well, he's got two touchdowns on the board, his team does, but they could have an awful lot more than what they do. 17 to 16, our score, UC over Miami in the 92nd meeting of these two schools. Here's a pass to Schillinger, incomplete. So he's back in the ball game, that's good news. John Lewis on the coverage. Bates just missed him a little bit a couple times tonight on those long passes. Bates has just missed quite a few passes tonight, and I really believe that's because of the pressure UC is putting on. Let's watch it again here. Yeah, you can see it's a little too tall for Schillinger. And unfortunately, you also don't like to have your receiver uh -oh. up in the air extended like that with a uh, defensive back coming up at him. That'll put Schillinger out of the game real quick again. So it's second and 10, 6.20 left in the period. The UC staff talking things over. They only have a one-point lead after blocking a Gusman extra point that would have tied it. Here's the pass in the flat. Ducking a receiver. Gets it up there. That's Costello all the way to 49. This little kid's exciting to watch. A freshman, and he's doing a great job out there. A 14-yard reception. Sabatis made the stop, but Mondo Costello with a good catch. Here we're going to see Costello. He breaks one tackle and gets outside and gets some more yardage for himself. He's so, he looks so small out there, but he is a he has a couple times come real close to really breaking one free. Another time on a running play, a 20-yard run that he had earlier tonight, he almost broke it for more than that. So it's first and 10 up to the 49, and the Redskins are at it again. Here comes Bates. Got the man in the flat, Jawitz, but it's incomplete. Got an injured Bearcat down there. Looks like Leonard Cry, the fullback, being checked out, but he's getting up under his own power now. Cry is the starter this year. Took that spot away from Tackett, I believe. So it's going to be second down and 10 yards to go. 5.48 left in this third period. The Redskins trying to put the ball back in my into.